A lot of shocking things have happened in the past week in football. A 17-year-old went to Germany for £26 million. Pounds. Arsenal won two games and apparently they're back. There were 44 goals scored in the championship this weekend. Leeds United were crowned champions and returned to the Premier League after a 16-year absence. West Brom bottled automatic promotion against us. And then Brentford bottled automatic promotion. Plenty of shocking things, as you can see. But there is one thing that is not only shocking, it's just stupid. Have a wild guess what I'm talking about. Well. Right. First things first, for those who are wondering why you, you can't access the stream and rewatch it, because I deleted it, because, because I streamed from my phone, I had to upload it all from my phone and it wouldn't do it, so I had to delete it. Bit dumb, but... Pretty sure had I gone to upload another video on my phone, it wouldn't have let me. So, no long run is probably the better option here. So, next time I stream, I'll just get a face cam and do it that way through my computer. Um, I didn't even do a, a reaction to West Brom apologies, but um, I went out straight after the game, as I said on the stream, and then I was away Saturday and Sunday. Um, great game in my opinion. You know, it's two 0 if the refs don't mess up there, and it's it's just sad lot that they would mess up for us, like they always do, uh, a lot of the time, anyways, for the most part. So I thought I thought we played quite well. Questionable lineup in my opinion, but we came through in the end. And Emil grabbing that good finish, um, and um, I was buzzing to see that. So now that the happy stuffs out of the way, we can um, we can talk about. Uh, what ruined my day yesterday? Just sat there having a nice meal at a nice place, uh, not thinking about town at all. Where, um, where? Well, mathematically not, but we're pretty much safe. No worries in the world. Then I get a text. Have you seen this? Is this a sick joke? Now, what I saw was that Cowley had been sacked. I thought it was a wind-up at first. Can you please tell me, honestly, how you can hire someone to do a job, they do the job, then sack them? Please, please, someone try and, like, reason with me in the comments, in DMs, whatever. Why has this happened? Because I am lost. See that... Right, so timeline. Sievert was doing bad, couldn't get a win. Sievert got sacked. Hudson, Cowley pointed. Better, better, better. Win at, uh, no, wrong. Um, slow start. Win at Stoke. Win at Hull. Uh, go on that win run where we beat Brentford. Lose at Preston. Lose a couple of games. Beat Bristol and Charlton. Lose to Leeds, lockdown, sacked. W what is the thought process behind that? Keeps us up, gets sacked. Now, there are, there are plenty of rumours circulating on Twitter and Facebook um, and Instagram, which all of which I've been um, very active on in the past two days because of this happening. One of them is that Cowleys were speaking to Bristol and that's why they got rid of them. Seems a bit far-fetched, but it's a possibility. One of them was that Phil didn't want them to be in control of transfers, so he lied sort of under the carpet to appoint them, then sacked them. Um, I don't know whether I trust Phil or not yet as a chairman, but um, that does sound like a likely option based on our sort of methods as a club. Uh, we don't like to spend money, so Cowley would have liked to spend some and we, he'd have probably got told no and kicked straight out the door if I know this club correctly, and unfortunately I do. Don't get me wrong, I love this club to bits, but over the past couple of months they've really, really boiled my blood. So, anyway, Cowley sacked. I mean, oh, it's just so stupid. Um, forgive me if I go in and out of craziness over this. I just, I still can't believe it, it's stupid. Um, so yeah, that happened. Um, 
Then we got rid of Hudson and Ida. You know, head of recruitment still there. Um, recruitment's not been great. Um, there's a lot of things that you've got to question, really, that's gone on in the past two days. Um, no one can get their head around this Cowley thing, and I still can't at the end of the day. It is stupid that you sack someone that's doing, you know, bits for a club. And that's why I kind of think the reasoning for it was that he wanted to do transfers that the board were not ready to do. That's the only sort of scenario I can imagine. Like, they're all possibilities, don't get me wrong, but at the moment in time, that's all I'm seeing. I'm just seeing it happening like this. I'm saying, Carly's going, yep, yeah, so we need some money. We want to sign some people. Uh, got a couple of lads at Lincoln that I know would do a job in this squad. What do you think? And then someone said, no, we want to make the decisions around here. We want to sign another and Benza or Diakabe for 22 million. Whereas, although although you, Danny, could have some you know good suggestions, we don't care about that. We, we just want to buy some um, some random French guy that's played in Ligue 2 and um, never seen the style of English football before. We think he'd be a real fit for the club, sort of thing. Um, that's what I'm seeing. That's the only sort of writing on the wall that I'm sort of picturing here. But I don't know what's gone on. Like I said, I could be right. But I swear, if we get a head coach and not a manager, swear the board's making all the decisions about the players. We've seen how bad that goes. The only good thing to come out of our second Prem season was Bakuna. And, and you know, even then, was Baku is Bakuna worth it for the amount of bad players we got for it? Bakuna was 1 million and Mbenza and Diakabi were 22 for the pair of them. And Bakuna's easily double the player, um, but, um, double the player compared to both of them. So, uh, it's just a mess at the moment. I can't get my head around it. No one can. I mean, it really comes to the point where we can't really, if we don't laugh, we would cry. The point where people are putting on Twitter, um, is Terry the Terrier next? Uh, you know, play your bets now because Terry the Terry is like five to one to get sacked. That's really how how comical our club has become. Um, Jesus, oh my God! So, yeah, you've got that. So then Hudson and Ida have gone. So Hudson can't be the manager, which. Although I rate Hudson as, you know, staff at the club, in a way I'm a bit relieved that he's not going to be getting the job full-time because we do everything on the cheap, so that was, you know, that was a strong possibility in my eyes. Um, probable candidates at the moment, you've got that Carlos, I forgot his last name, from Leeds. I'd really like him at the club, but at the end of the day... I'm pretty sure because, you know, he'd been under Bielsa and one of those, he's, I bet he's one of those coaches who will want to get his own players in and our board will just say, no, no, we want to make the decisions around here. Why would we let you do that? If that's happened, of course, I may be wrong. I may be criticising people for the sake of it. But uh, I need to point the finger at someone because something's gone wrong with this club. Right, um, the next candidate was... Chris Hewton, but he's already refused us when we were in the Prem, so that's definitely not happening. Um, Gareth Ainsworth, I think it is, the Wickham manager. I don't know where Bucky's uh, come up with this stuff. I mean, he's just got promoted with Wickham. Why would he come to us when... I'm not even funny. Next season, I'd probably say Wickham have a better chance of staying up than we do. Or the equal. Because, look, we're in a relegation battle now, and Wickham may not even be in one. I mean, the three teams that come up this season, who came up? Luton... Charlton, who were the other one? Oh, was it Wigan? I was Wigan here. This is going to annoy me actually. No, Barnsley, well, wasn't it? It's someone. But like, beginning of the season, Charlton looked like they could have gone up, but it's only because of injuries. Like, Charlton have been really hard done by. Charlton would have probably finished like 15th, 14th, had injuries, not, you know, gone against them. So it is possible for a team to come up and do well. It's not like it never happens. I mean, Luton at the start weren't doing too bad. They won a couple of games. It just, you know, in the long run, stuff goes against you, especially when, you know, you've not got the most of squad depth. And, um, yeah, this is going to be a long video where I waffle on about stuff like that. But, so, 
Carly's been sacked after absolute, well, stupidity. Um, who do I, let's go, on, let's go on about who I don't want. Like, I don't want Ainsworth. I don't think he's proven in this league, so you don't go for someone like that. Yeah, Carly's weren't proven, but how many, it's like people, like when ever someone corrects me about that, it's like how many, how many like good eggs are you going to get? From like gambling, it's like okay, Cowley's are one in a few. You're not going to get a manager to come from League One and Championship and hit the ground running like Cowley's did every time. It's all chance and luck. Um, I don't want Saul Campbell anywhere near that job. I've seen rumours. I don't want it to happen. He, he couldn't cut it at South End, so for me, he's not cutting it at Huddersfield. Uh, Wagner was a possibility. Personally. At the moment, I think our main problem is defence. We can score goals most of the time, but we can't defend a lot of the time. And I think Wagner would be decent for us. Yeah, he's not done good in Schalke, but he did a job for us once. I'd welcome him back with, up, um, with open arms at this point. Um, it'd be a bit of a laugh and it'd be a bit of a trip down memory lane seeing back at the club, but I'd support it. I'd back that. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd back Wagner. I'd back... Um, this Carlos guy because you know tactically he is he's what we would need who else have I seen uh, Adkins I just don't think he's had you you know had you asked me this a couple of months ago I did say Adkins was probably the best out of the bunch but now not really cute one come to us like I say um, there's a couple more John Terry 12 to 1 Jesus who makes this stuff up like John Terry's going to come to us. Um, if he did, that'd be a bit of a laugh. But like I say, he's not proven as a, as a proper like, manager. So I, I really won't like to gamble another season like we have done in the past. All town fans want is literally a, um, a semi-decent manager. Investment into the squad. Investment correctly invested. And then everything would you know go back to normal. Fans would be happy. There'd be, there wouldn't be as many empty seats. We'd get points on the board. But unfortunately, it seems like that's too much to ask. I mean, only town would manage to make a weekend so full of, um, you know, surprise and joy by beating the second best team in the league and then ruin it on the last day of the weekend by sacking the guy that's caused all the joy and all the surprise in this club. I mean, we saw a photo of Schindler looking like he was saying goodbye to the coaches. We thought Schindler was going. He was saying goodbye to the managers. That's That that really does sort of speak volume to me. I mean, it's the same as always. If it's not the squad, it's the board. If it's not the board, it's the managers. If it's not that, it's summer. And the only thing that stays consistent in this club... For the most part is the fans and they're being treated horribly at this moment in time people are threatening not to renew do i blame them no does that make them any less of a fan no it doesn't personally each to their own i have renewed because you know i really enjoy watching the game not to say that you you who are not renewing don't but you know it's just something i just couldn't imagine not doing you know ever since i got my season ticket i've had no thought in my mind of ever getting rid of it um, unless we've lost like five goals to nil or summer and I've like, you know, thought for like a second in my head as a joke, obviously. But um, but I have no disrespect to those to those fans who are not renewing because at the end of the day, yeah, although it's, it is value for money with how cheap it is, the fans are being messed about here. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say illness towards any specific members of the board or anything like that until the story comes out and when the story comes out I can say whatever I want really Carter but um, as long as it's not abuse or all like that but you know what I mean but um, not that I want to do that but if something's not being if a business is not being correctly run you criticise who's ruining it, running it at the end of the day that's not in any way you know a dig at a Phil or anyone in the board I'm just using a sort of business hierarchy example of that um, but I mean, I mean, who on earth sacks the guy that gets you, like, like gets you another year in the championship? We thought we were off to Blackpool and Plymouth away in a midweek. 
when we might actually survive another season to go to places like Villa, Norwich, uh, Bournemouth if they come down, or Watford or whatever. But but um, and that's possible because of Cowleys and what they've done with minimal investment. So at the end of the day, if Cowleys can do that with minimal investment, they're not going to find many other people that are going to be able to replicate that or do better with little to no investment again. Um, Grant's uh, apparently someone's bidded fifteen million for Grant. I'm not. I'm just not having it anymore. Like, we're not getting robbed like that again. I'm sorry, but no. Billion fifteen million was a fair price. In fact, that was robbery on Bournemouth. If anything, um, but Grant fifteen million. It's twenty two point five at least in today's market with his age and with his quality. It's a bad team. I must add. Like you look at Mitrovic, Watkins, Benarama. You look at all their goal and assist tallies, but they're playing for the best of the best. Grant has got this by playing for one of the worst of the worst. And you're going you're gonna to question his record. Yeah, he's gone quiet the past few games, but you cannot question a season um, by a striker that's done so well in his first year in the Championship. But yeah, um, I'm shocked. And usually I'd, um, I'd run you know, to a camera in a room by myself like I do in some videos. But um, I just don't have the energy anymore. Like, town is just... It's just such a stressful, such a stressful thing. And each to their own, like, yeah, no disrespect to anyone who supports a better team than town. But there was a video of a um, of a whole city fan, a kid, going around on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. And the kids bought nothing but facts. Um, hollering a mess right now with their own. Similar to our situation, only we have star players that can, you know, do something. Holler going down now, unless they win Cardiff 15 0, which just won't happen. That Wigan defeat really did um, put them in a in a poor place, and um, I feel bad for a club like Hull. You know, another Yorkshire team, once in the promised land of the Premier League, lack of investment, lack of correct correct investment sent them down. They're literally a lot like us in many ways. They're just you know a couple of miles down the M62 and playing orange. But the kid spoke facts. He was like on about how Premier League fans. Um, cry a river when they don't win a game or when they don't sign an £80 million player. And the lads bang on, like, yeah, people say that you can be upset at your own clubs, like, not achieving things, but it's different to fearing that your club won't play in the league next year. That's completely different. Like, not signing a £90 million striker, you will feel a lot more hurt as a football fan if you are told that your team may be playing in League One next year than that, obviously. And the kid was speaking facts and people were just thinking, and that's that, um, taking taking the mick out of him, but that's just how it feels to be a town fan now. It's just like, you know, you go through the motions, we win a game, yeah? I'm still happy that we've won the game, but then there's always something to kick you straight down the stairs straight after, you know what I mean? It's like, why? Just let us celebrate and let us be happy that we've achieved um, another year in the Championship. But no, not even two days later, and Cowley's booted straight out the door. So, well, Carl is gone. Let's just sort of deal with it. We've uh, we've had his time to grieve, and um, yeah, it's it's over now. But um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, some people think that administration's looming. Some people think that we're going to sack the mascots at this rate. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think administration's looming. Thousands of people have messaged Paddy Power asking them if this is another stunt because it's about a year ago to the day that we did the um, the famous kit thing. Um, it's all just a shambles. Um, to be totally honest, I want my club back. Um, I want I want that sort of identity or that sort of that sort of that sort of agenda, that sort of thing that that we as town fans had. In the promotion season with Wagner, I would give anything to go back to, to there. I'd make sure I went to more away games. You know, cost was a problem back then because, you know, I, I didn't I didn't have as much money to go to them as I do now. That's not a flex, by the way. It's just making a fair point. But I would have gone to a lot of more away games in that season. In the, both the Prem seasons as well. I missed out. Uh, you know, I didn't go to Old Trafford. I didn't go to Anfield. Um, these things cost money and I regret heavily not going because it's going to be... Almost, in my eyes, a decade until we're even sniffing around the Premier League again. The way our club's going at the moment, you can't blame me for thinking like that at all. 
Um, <clears throat> even if we do get a good ma um, manager in, will he be a manager or will, will he be a head coach? Again, like I'm saying, will it just be the board making all the poor transfer decisions as per usual? Do you know what? I don't know. If you, um, if you viewers, anyone who's watching down below has any idea what the hell is going on, then please do not hesitate to comment down below. Also, if you do enjoy me ranting into a camera, then like the video, subscribe to the channel because we're nearly at 2k, we can get there. I'm, um, I'm immensely grateful at the support recently and 2k is massive. 2k for me is bigger than 1k because 1k is, you know, just getting on the on the map and 2k is really sort of, um, you know, putting myself out there. So 2k is a massive achievement for me and, um, you know, I'll be immensely grateful if we can get that soon. So, um, yeah. Thanks to everyone watching as always. Like I say, thanks for support. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you do enjoy the content. Millwall preview will be out tomorrow, although I don't really know what I'm going to say. I'll figure some out like I always do. Um, I won't be streaming the game because I need to get face cam and all that, but I'll do that for some games next season, for some neutral games as well. Um, because I did enjoy watching the game and, you know, people talking and me looking at Chad, that was pretty good to be fair. So, you know, if there was like a playoff, like, or like a Champions League game that was on telly, I could watch that and then, you know, like stream me reacting to it as a neutral perspective, of course. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, comment down below. Comment anything you want related to anything Huddersfield Town and I will reply um, to the best of my abilities. Uh, you can message me on uh, social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, all that gravy um, as normal. Um, I'll respond when I find the time busy person me uh, um, and uh, yeah um, oh, I'd also like to give a massive thank you to the um, to the Leeds fans that um, the Leeds fans that I live literally rent free in their heads those Leeds fans the ones that keep commenting on my Instagram post you know what keep doing that that, that really doesn't bother me whatsoever all it tells me is that you're watching my videos and paying me so cheers pal thanks a lot but um, but yeah as comical as that is, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.